Hi everyone, Dr. Olivia Joseph here. As promised, I am simplifying my one hour doctor's training on MTHFR. So I'm gonna keep this video short and sweet and teach you the most important things. And if you wanna learn more about it, you can go and watch the entire hour doctor's training that I was hired to do. Um, and that training was intended to teach doctors about what MTHFR is, what it does in your body and how it can negatively impact your health and many other systems of the body. So first and foremost, MTHFR, what does it stand for? It stands for methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase. So when you have a genetic mutation, what that means is you either have less protection or no protection from that gene. So what you need to understand about methylation is it's a pathway. And it's a pathway that your body uses to detoxify. So when you have MTHFR, your body has a harder time removing toxins. And when you take synthetic vitamins or get toxic exposure to medication or things in the environment, if your body can't eliminate those properly, it can negatively impact your health. Now, methylation is also responsible for absorbing nutrients. So people who have MTHFR are more prone to nutritional deficiencies, not just in folate and in B12, but also in vitamin D, which is very protective and actually acts like a hormone in your body. So a little bit of history on MTHFR. We've known about this gene mutation for a long, long time. But typically or traditionally, the only physicians who were testing for this gene mutation were maybe OB-GYNs. And why were they checking? Because this gene mutation is associated and linked to and with infertility, and also miscarriage. But that is not all MTHFR is associated with. It is associated with many different clinical conditions. Now, if I look away, I've got my presentation that I use to train physicians over here on my computer. And what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to pick out the slides that are the most important and add them as a link in the comments section of today's video. Because visually, you have to see how powerful these slides are because they're all backed by clinical research and clinical trials. There have been over 5,000 clinical trials done on MTHFR gene mutations. And that's why it infuriates me when doctors say it's not a real thing or it doesn't affect anything or it doesn't matter. I'm gonna show you 5,000 clinical trials that say otherwise and I'm gonna show you just how much it affects outside of the arena of fertility and miscarriage because that's not everybody's goal, right? It's only a goal at a, for a certain demographic females during childbearing years. And I realize if you have MTHFR and you're unable to get pregnant or you're having miscarriage after miscarriage, that's a very hard emotional thing to deal with. I know it is. If you've carried a baby that had a neural tube defect, such as spina bifida or cleft palate, you've been affected by this gene mutation. So it affects more than just fertility. So some other things that it affects is depression, big time, anxiety, dementia, cognitive function, stroke, blood clot, and chronic inflammation. So let's talk about that for a second. If you are homozygous for the C mutation or compound heterozygous, you tend to see something called hyperhomocysteinemia. And what homocysteine is, is it's an inflammatory marker. Now, where does it cause inflammation? Everywhere in the bloodstream, in the body, in your blood vessels, and in your brain. So when you have elevated homocysteine levels, you are at a higher risk for stroke, blood clot, and also dementia. So do you see how MTHFR gene mutations can affect males as well as females and affect you lifelong, not just during fertility? So MTHFR is not something that I take lightly in my practice. 
When I do see somebody has this gene mutation, I am often running a homocysteine test, particularly in people who have the homozygous C mutation or who are compound heterozygous. And I'm going to put information on what all that lingo means in those slides. For right now, don't worry about it. Don't worry about which mutations are worse than the others. So something we see commonly present with MTHFR gene mutation is poor absorption of B12, high levels of B12 without supplementation, other nutrient deficiencies as well. So it's often that we see a person with MTHFR reacts to everything. They react to every medication that they take and every supplement that they take. Why is that? Because MTHFR or methylation affects your absorption of nutrients as well as your detoxification pathway. Now, how much folate, methylfolate, do you need to take if you have MTHFR? That's an important topic that I want to talk about. This is not a one-size-fits-all approach. How much you supplement depends on which mutations you have. How much you supplement depends on how much inflammation is in your body, which you have to test inflammatory markers like uh, homocysteine to know that. We also check vitamin D because there's also a vitamin D receptor mutation along with MTHFR. So there's multiple pathways that work together. What I do want to tell you is that taking the methyl form of folate by itself is nowhere near as effective as taking it with other methyl donors or other B vitamins that are methylated. We have ample science and research that shows B3, B6, B9, and B12 need to be combined for absorption. And when they're combined with betaine, which is an acid that helps you absorb and digest these B vitamins, it's even more effective. So the answer is not how much, it's what are you taking it with and is it the right form? Folic acid is not the devil. We get folic acid in food. Don't worry about it. But when synthetic folic acid is fortified into food, and when you take full guard, which is synthetic folic acid, this is where we run into issues. Because if you have MTHFR, your body can't absorb the nutrient and it can't detoxify it. And taking folic acid will create more inflammation in your body if you have MTHFR, you need to be taking the methyl form of folate and you need to be taking it with other methylated B vitamins. Now we're going to get into a really common topic. So one thing I do want to mention as far as how much, I'm going to give you actual dosing that I use with my patients, but it is not a one size fits all approach. Individuals who are homozygous for the C677T mutation do need more methyl folate. So now let me give you a range, and I'm going to include this slide. In clinical trials, 800 mcgs of methylfolate, now not by itself, with other methylated B vitamins, has shown to be the most clinically effective. So when they checked doses at 400, 800, 1200, 1600, 2000, they didn't see much clinical difference. They found that around 800 mcgs is the most clinically effective dose. Now some people need more and maybe some people need less. I use a multivitamin that has methylfolate in children and that has a lot less than 800 mcgs now in adults the phyto might the phyto multi or multivitamin that i use most commonly with my patients has 800 mcgs of methylfolate so 800 is kind of a safe spot and a sweet spot and i do want to talk about one thing that's a little controversial that nobody ever talks about if you have cancer listen up if you have cancer i suggest you do not take the methyl form of folate I suggest you do not supplement with high doses of methylated B vitamins. And the reason why is some cancers feed on methyl donor groups, some hormone positive cancers. Now here's the catch 22. 
if you have MTHFR and you don't absorb nutrients and you don't detoxify properly, that can increase your risk for certain cancers and certain hormone positive cancers. But if you do have an active form of some of those cancers, I'm not suggesting you supplement with anything unless you work with a geneticist, a functional medicine oncologist that really knows what they're doing and what they're talking about. And you can certainly find those all over the country. We're a little bit limited here in the St. Louis area. We only had one. She's on a sabbatical or a medical leave right now. Um, but we do have a decent functional medicine community here in the St. Louis area. We're up to about 40 practitioners and I'm happy to say that that's growing. But I wanna talk to you about the clinical implications of MTHFR on mood, on depression, on, and on cognitive function. So methylation works with other pathways. In order for methylation to occur, you have to have proper digestion. Your body uses betaine, your body uses choline, your body uses other methylated B vitamins, and your body uses something called methionine. And when you see people with elevated homocysteine, that inflammation gets to your brain and it affects not only cognitive function, but it can also affect anxiety and depression. So what these people do is they find themselves on antidepressants and maybe they work for a while, but then what happens is their symptoms get worse or they come back. So then what? You either increase the medicine or you need to take more medications. We have clinical trials that show, and I'm including it in the slides, that adding SAMe, which is a universal methyl donor, methionine, adding SAMe in certain doses, about 200 to 400, improves the clinical effectiveness of antidepressants. So doesn't that make more sense versus just increasing your medicine and taking more medicine? I mean, come on. And wouldn't it be good to know if you do have depression, anxiety, issues with memory, what your homocysteine levels are and whether or not you have MTHFR gene mutations? So this is what I want you to understand from this video. MTHFR affects so much more than just fertility and miscarriage. It affects cognitive function, mood, depression, anxiety, neural tube defects like spina bifida and cleft palate. And I wish I could tell you in the United States that those things are declining, but they're not. They're actually increasing, which is a really sad fact. And a big factor is we're using the synthetic form of these nutrients, which the body cannot use. And the more people who have MTHFR have a harder time absorbing these nutrients and detoxifying properly. And we all know the effects of toxicity on the body. They're not good, they're ugly, um, and they predispose you to disease. But what I do need you to understand is this isn't just about methylfolate. And this isn't about mega dosing methylfolate. You have to realize the research is not there pointing to using 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, up to 10,000 units of the methyl form of folate. That is not what the research says. The research says, and I'm gonna show you this, that about 800 is the, the right range to be using, but not methyl folate alone. You often have to combine it with the other methyl B vitamins and maybe betaine and maybe SAMe. It is not a one size fits all approach. You have to get with the right person. And if you do have MTHFR, have your homocysteine levels checked. It's a, soup, it's a simple blood test that any lab can do. And if it is elevated, you have to do something to bring it down because if it's elevated, this increase in inflammation doesn't just affect cognitive decline in mood, it increases your risk for stroke and for a blood clot and also dementia. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you post in the comments and I'm gonna do my best to get these slides loaded into the comments. If for any reason I can't do that, I'll find a solution such as hosting another webinar. Thank you very much for joining me on a, on a topic I am very passionate about that more people need to know about. Thanks.